Knight, and I'm with my Uncle Michael. And today Sorry, we're going to be making beeswax candles, which is so cool because I love candles. I love the smell of candles. And today, if they're going to smell like honey, it's just going to be really great. So, what is our first step? First step is you want to order some uh, uh, beeswax uh, online. We usually get the organic kind. Naturecraft.net is where we usually get ours from. And um, what we're going to do first is once you get your uh, bulk beeswax, it's going to look, when you get it, it's going to look um, kind of like a gold bar. This is um, already a candle, but it looks just like this, but in a gold bar. You're going to stick that candle uh, wax or the beeswax into uh, your crock pot. Make sure it's a crock pot that you're only going to ever use for beeswax again, because once you do uh, use it for beeswax melting, it's pretty much, that's it. That's done. So, um, Anyways, we're gonna stick it in here. Uh, turn it on, I turn it on high. Uh, it takes about an hour, hour and a half to melt fully. Uh, once it's melted fully, or in the meantime, while it's melting, what you wanna do is you wanna take some twine, some candle, and you can get this anywhere, uh, some candle making twine. Um, and I usually do a triple strand, just like a braid, where we'll tape the edges here uh, with three of them. Uh, and what we'll do is um, strand it out so that it looks just like like I said, just like a braid or a ponytail. And then what you do with that is you take that, tie off the ends. You see how that's nice and tied off. This, this end will be tied off. You stick it in your wax. That way it takes all the fibers and it makes it solid. Um, that way there's no movement in any of your fibers. You lay it down over here to dry, okay? And then once, uh, once it's dried, uh, in the meantime, this, this will have uh, melted, hopefully. We'll take the uh, wax, we'll pour it over here into a container. Most people use like a metal container or something like that. Um, I use just what I've had on hand, which is a plastic container for juicing, <laughs> uh, which is what I'm gonna be using. And uh, what we'll do is we'll pour that into one of these containers here. Naya, if you wanna go ahead and pour that uh, into here. Um, and generally it'll take about 15 minutes, uh, maybe 20 minutes to get to the point where you can pour it. Now you don't wanna pour it hot, and the reason being is that it will stick to the mold. These are the, uh, the candle molds here that we've ordered. You can get them anywhere um, at Michael's. Um, uh, Amazon's got them. And what you do uh, is you wait till you can see kind of a mist where the uh, it's starting to kind of haze over. Uh, that one ha that one's starting to because you see how it's getting the line around the side. Once you start seeing a little cloud over the top, that's when you know it's ready to pour. Um, uh, if you want to as well, you can do... Uh, yes, I was going to ask, can you put any essential oils in this to make it smell more? Like Absolutely, and the more the merrier too, and in this case we have lemon. Uh, if you want to go ahead and put I some lemon, love the smell of go lemon ahead. And honey. How many drops should I do? I would just do as many as you feel are necessary, 20 like or something like that, maybe 30. Okay, that's good. Okay. You can mix it if you want to as well. Smell that and see if it smells. And, and, and you can tell by the smell of, uh, of your essential oil, how strong, or if you want it to be a little stronger. A little smell stronger. It? Do you? I can smell it, but can you I smell like, it? yes, I like a lot of lemon and honey. So That's same rules apply, you just want to wait till it hazes over. Um, in the meantime, take your, uh, take your uh, wicks uh, and you want to cut it to a little bit bigger. You see how that one's a little bit uh, taller than the candle. Um, and there's actually, there should be a hole in the bottom of your um, uh, mold there. We, what we've done is taken that wick, put it to the side, and we've taped the bottom. That way once you pour the hot wax in there, it doesn't uh, leak out the side, okay? So leave it there. And this here you can buy, um, a lot of times with these candle, uh, with these candle kits, you'll get these, and these are to center your wick on top. And right here you'll see how we've uh, run that wick right up uh, into that center piece, and you, you, there's kind of a side groove here, you kind of push it through. That way once you're pouring the wax in there, it doesn't move. Uh, and it'll stay. Now, how long does it take for the wicks to dry? The wicks takes about <laughs> three to four minutes. Once you actually <laughs> dip it and you put it on here to dry, it's a it's super quick process. So it's ready to go. You're ready to start making, uh, prepping your candles. And this is this, these are just ready to go. Uh, we're ready for Naya to pour these um, as soon as this here um, yep. uh, kind of glazes over. And how so, long does that take? 15 to 20 minutes usually, depending on the, the heat of your of your wax. Awesome, so we'll be back in 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so we're back 15 minutes later, and all we have to do, this is what it looks like when it's ready to be poured, and you want it to look like this so it doesn't stick to the sides of the uh, mold. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of scared Yeah, so just no, go ahead. No, you can just take your hands here, lift it from the top, 
um, okay. and just pour it right in. You see there's got that little nozzle there and okay. then just pour it in from the side and you should be fine. Yep. And then I would go pretty close to the top. I, I go as far as I can and use as much uh, candle space as I possibly can. Okay. So keep going. You're good to go. I think that's that last that's little bit. That's about it. And so you see how there's just a bit, as it's kind of slowly hardened here, there's a bit in the bottom. We don't waste any beeswax at all. Mm, so what we do none. is we take uh, a spoon. Um, I believe I left the spoon, oh, right here. Um, so what we do is we just kind of, we kind of spoon it out and put it back into, again, this crock pot I only use for beeswax. So I constantly have a little bit of beeswax in here um, for times like these. See how that kind of just, that's a, lot, that's of a lot of beeswax right wow. there, right? Wow, it's so yeah. soft. So we're just gonna kind of spoon all that out uh, to use for another day. Um, and we'll do that with all of our, uh, with all of our uh, cups that we pour from. Again, this stuff is really sticky. Um, you are only going to want to use uh, items for beeswax. You want to want to keep it in your little kit at all times. Um, you won't be able to get this beeswax off here. So that's it. So what we'll do now is we'll wait uh, for this to harden, and then we can uh, pour it out of the. Uh, we can kind of tap it out of the mold, and we'll, you can take a look at it then. Yes, so before we go, I wanted to know, you told me how these, earlier when we were making candles, mm -hmm. you told me how the bees, how they kind of made the beeswax. So could you share that? Yeah, so what happens is the bees go to flowers, uh, different flowers, and I can't remember, the, maybe four to five miles away from their hive. Um, they collect the nectar, um, and they go back, and as they're uh, kind of regurg, it's going to be disgusting, but yeah. as, they're, as they're throwing that back up into the hive, yeah. <laughs> Uh, what they do is they, they, they catch a little bit in their, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but right here in their thy uh, thyroid area. Is, if, if we were bees, it would be right here, caught right here, um, as if it were a little phlegm in our throat. And that's kind of the final thing that they kind of cough up at the end, and they put into their uh, the hive to make you know the honeycombs uh, for, for their babies. So, and, and that's the beeswax. It's so... Cool. So again, we'll be back in like an hour to mm -hmm. show you how we... And give you some fun facts about yeah. kind of bees and, and, and actually what these candles are good for. Yes. Okay, so we're back and the candle is ready to be taken out of the mold. So what is the first thing I do? Okay, so if you want to take a look real quickly and show, I'll show you exactly what how you know that it's ready. Uh, see how it's kind of separated there from the side? Um, usually that's after about an hour or two. Um, it's still a little bit warm, which mm -hmm. I, we prefer it to be a little bit warmer when we take it out of the mold. Um, so go ahead and pick it up and remove the tape from the bottom. Okay. So you want to remove the tape. Um, you want to straighten out your wick because you're going to want it to slide out. Uh, okay. It'll slide out more easily. Um, go ahead and take off, move that to the side, uh, move the metal to the side. There you go. Lift that up. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to kind of pull it to the side. And then you want to kind of hit it. Okay, keep your hand down there so that you can catch it as it comes out. Oh, it's coming. Of, there you go. There you go. And so this right here is the long edge, right? This is the bottom of the candle. Oh. What we want to do here is we want to trim it, right? Mm -hmm. So we, what we like to do is leave maybe a quarter of an inch. I like to leave about a quarter of an inch here. Um, and what we'll do, yeah, go ahead and pull that to the side. And I, and I tend oh. to like to push it in. You see it's nice and soft, so it pushes in easily. That way you make a nice and uh, flush bottom. That way it, it sits evenly. Like uh, there's no worries there. Uh, what you'll do is flip it over. There's your candle. Ooh, so so nice. it looks really pretty, right? Yes. Um, and you'll also want to trim the wick, okay? Wick trimming in a uh, beeswax candle is of the utmost importance, and you'll spend a lot of time with the maintenance um, of your beeswax candle um, because let's go ahead and do the, the, the quarter inch here. You want to trim that really, really low, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's mm -hmm. about as low as you want to go. Um, but that's actually that's actually a, a, a good length there. Reason being, and let's, uh, we'll take this uh, candle here for example that's been burning a while. Um, now, the, beeswax candles in general, what what they are is they're non-toxic. Uh, they're good for allergies. Uh, what it does is cleans the air, right? So beeswax candles produces negative ions. Those negative ions, which are good, that's positive energy that attaches to positive ions, which are like uh, pet dander. Um, uh, mites in the air, mold, uh, any kind of uh, aller allergy uh, mold, uh, cedar, all those things over here that are bad for you, 
This attaches to it and pretty much drops it to the ground because it's too heavy. Wow. Wow. It replaces it with energy or uh, negative ions, if you will. So the same feeling that you get when you go to the ocean or to the waterfalls oh, yes. that where you, you feel like, oh, it's like a breath of fresh air, right? That's what this produces, okay? What? So basically so, you have the beach at your own house. Exactly. <laughs> That's cool. Exactly. Um, and so in order to maintain it, this, and again, this will burn about three to four times longer than a paraffin candle or a soy candle. Um, one of those, any of those uh, kind of carcinogenic candles, which this is non-carcinogenic, obviously. Yeah. Um, what you have to do is maintain the wick. The wick needs to always be at a quarter inch. It doesn't smoke, so if you do see your uh, candle smoking, and you can kind of be, see that this will smoke every now and again, mm -hmm. and you can actually see that the wick is a little high, right? Yeah. So what we do first is we can just push the side in. So we're gonna continue to push in the sides, okay? Um, and what I like to do is kind of push toward and then leave a little bit of a hump there, right? So that it's kind of, uh, it kind of it caves in there. Um, what we'll do at this point, since this is too long, this wick is we're gonna blow it out. I love that. Okay, part. and we're going to trim it to about a half inch. Okay, and we'll let it dry. But that's about where you want to keep your wick at all times, if possible. Okay. Um, the reason being is beeswax is beeswax is really special. It takes the bees. Oh yeah. A lot of work in order to make just yeah. a little bit of wax. Yeah. Um, I know we talked about it earlier. Yes. And I tried my hardest to recreate what they do because you said earlier they throw up, kind yeah, of throw up a little it's bit. It's kind of, of created in your abdomen, and then they so, use this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they this. I'm guessing it's about how much they throw up, or maybe even half of this. And I just think that's so cool. And to make that big, huge thing, I can't even imagine how many bees. So that they make too. all of this beeswax. So all these thousands of bees are making thousands. these combs uh, to raise their young, to hold honey. Um, it's uh, and I think that it takes one pound or eight one pound of beeswax that makes eight pounds of honey and so imagine yeah. a pound of this it was it's it's about it's about two of these so yeah that, that's a lot of beeswax that's, that's a lot, lot of, of beeswax that's a lot of, work. That's, that's a lot of bees that's, that's a, a lot, lot of work. bees um, so anyways the great thing about the, again I, I think we went into the health benefits already um, this is what your candle should look like if you want to look over here. We've made quite a few of these the, the candles here um, We've been practicing quite a bit. Anybody can do this at home. It's super simple. Oh, yeah, it's like It's more simple than you think. It's really really. It's basically simple. melt down it, have, have some molds have some have some wicking melt down the wax pour it Yeah, and, and you don't even have it. to make your own wicks. You can buy yeah, you can buy wicks as well. Um, this is just easier because it's cheaper. Yeah. You can do it yourself. Uh, yeah. You can tr control the size of your wicks, as you can see here. Um, I don't know if you can get a, a good pan on this one, but we took a, two wicks and actually tied them together. Um, to make Naya actually tied wick. those together, and we, we dipped it um, to hold it together. And this is going to be the wick for uh, you. Get, you can you know do your own, just customize your own candles. It's it's super fun. Yeah, so. it also makes like a bigger flame because you said the square candles were harder to. Yeah, because yeah. it doesn't get all around the edges. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and thank you so much Uncle Mike for helping us make these candles. I'll link everything down below to help you make these candles like the molding and the wax and everything and I'll see you guys in my next video. Awesome. Thanks.